take a look at corned beef. St. Patrick's Day is just around the corner and everybody's going to be cooking corned beef. Usually corned beef, cabbage, carrots, and potatoes. So what to do with it afterwards is corned beef hash. Of course, after you cook the corned beef, Reuben, I don't know which I like better, Reuben's or corned beef hash or uh, take off of a Reuben, which is a Reuben with coleslaw. Anyway, but I want to show you corned beef hash. It's really, really good, versatile for breakfast, good for dinner, good for any time. Anyway, um, so the corned beef. I have a brisket. My favorite briskets come out of Detroit, Cy Ginsburg's corned beef. It's really good. And so all I did was put this in a pot, the flatter the better, and covered it with water to cover by barely an inch. That's it, no more. Put the seasoning pack in it, bring it to a boil, and then turn it down to a simmer. And by a simmer, I mean tiny little bubbles, like champagne bubbles coming up in your champagne glass. You probably have to monitor it, especially if you have electric heat. Um, I'm not sure about a slow cooker because I don't use them. I like stovetop. Gas heat's real easy uh, because you get instant gratification, shall we say. But just a little bit of a simmer and then cook it for two and a half to three hours. Three hours for a large piece, two and a half for a smaller piece. This one was smaller, so I cooked it for, for just two and a half. But then you want to cool it in the cooking liquid because that is going to add a lot of the flavor. You still have all the seasoning on it, and the, the liquid has so much flavor. If you were going to make corned beef and cabbage, then I would pull it out, put the corned beef cabbage in, cook that, pull that out, and then put the corned beef back in the liquid. But anyway, all right, so you have the corned beef cooked and cooled. You do want to cool this because it's going to cut a lot easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off now just a little bit of the fat. You need fat for flavor, period. That's all there is to it. But I don't really want that much for the hash. So I'm going to take my little paring knife and just trim off just, a, you know, down to the red meat in places where there actually is quite a bit. And then what you're going to notice is you will also be able to see the grain of the corned beef better because there is a way to cut this to keep it nice and tender. All right, so the grain. You can tell on one side or the other, it's really obvious. And it's usually the corned beef brisket, the way it's cut, harvested, whatever, is going to be um, usually it's in the grain is running towards the corner of the brisket okay so I can sort of I can tell on both sides the grain is running this way to this point you can see it on this side as well now what you want to do is cut this cross grain so what I'm going to do is take the knife and in about oh not quite half inch pieces a little bit better bigger than quarter inch slices, which is so not what you do for um, uh, for Rubens, but anyway, cut these into slices. And then take the slices, cut those in half on the length, and then cut them into, you know, about half inch size chunks. I personally, it's just my own, you know, personal preference. I don't like corned beef hash that looks like mush. I mean, you can get that out of a can. And since the corned beef is so good, you really want to taste the flavor of it, but not necessarily huge chunks. So, you know, quarter-ish to half-inch pieces work out really well because you can still get them in your mouth and not look barbaric eating the stuff. And then what I've done is I have taken potatoes, russet potatoes, a red skin potato works really well. The easiest way to cook them is put them in the oven for a baked potato. As soon as you can put a knife in so that they're tender, uh, pull them out and then let them cool and then cut them in about a half inch piece. You want to cut that in a slightly larger piece 
because they will shrink in the oven. The onions the same way, but the onions you're going to cut raw. And then the potatoes are going to go back on the sheet tray that you have uh, uh, covered with a little bit of olive oil and the onions on a sheet tray and then into a 400 oven for about 15-20 minutes or until they look like they've been pan fried but they haven't been and it's just so much easier you don't have all that mess on the stove and is it fast? Well it's faster if you include the cleanup. So anyway after those become nice and golden and the potatoes are a little crunchy then we're going to add these to the corned beef and mix it up. So next what you want to do is add a little chopped green onion or and or some fresh chopped parsley. Actually I'm going to add a little bit of both. Just a tablespoon. After all for St. Patrick's Day you'd really want to do this. Because the potatoes and onions I did not season I am going to lightly salt those and fresh ground pepper them and then I'm going to add whoops, some fresh chopped parsley. The parsley uh, that I prefer for flavor, well and for garnish too, is flat leaf parsley, Italian flat leaf. It's really fla flavorful and when you go to finish your plate it looks really pretty. There are some really nice curly parsley that you can find heirloom seeds for if you want to grow your own. I've had some from I think it's D. Landreth Seed Company. Oh my god the parsley is absolutely wonderful. Very very flavorful. And this is a good chlorophyll source too by the way. So after you get the parsley cleaned you might want to save the stems if you want to make stock and the stems are equally as good then what you do for a fast and easy chop is bunch the parsley up in your hand and then take a chef's knife you don't need a 10 inch it might be a little overkill and of course chop the parsley what I'm doing is picking up from the bottom putting it on top so that the larger leaves automatically come to the top and you're able to see when you have this cut down enough. And then into the bowl it goes. Then we're going to mix this up. Now, doesn't that look pretty? Then to serve the corned beef, we're going to put some after it's been rewarmed. Okay, so at this stage, you can put it into the refrigerator and bring it out and rewarm it the next day, either in a frying pan, covered, or in the oven. Either way, it makes no difference. I would cover it though, just to, you don't want to dry it out. Uh, you just want to rewarm it. Yeah, you can do it in the microwave, but you know, I prefer the pan. Now, a little note on the poached eggs. You can poach these in advance too. If this is something while you're cooking you want to just do and have done, poach the eggs in a little bit of simmering water, more of those champagne bubbles, and then drop the egg in slowly to the bottom. And you want to cook them until the whites are just set. And you'll know when that is. Pull them out with a slotted spoon and then put them on something flat, let them cool put them in the refrigerator, then when you want to go and eat them, put them back into some simmering water again for about two minutes tops. That's it. They're warmed and ready to go. So to serve them, I'm going to put the hash that again, whoops, kind of like those crunchy potatoes, the hash on the plate. Actually, I'm going to add a couple more potatoes to that. And then we're going to put a couple of perfectly poached eggs on the top and then because it's so pretty and you know as I always say you do eat with your eyes we'll garnish it with a little fresh chopped parsley if I were going to as I've done many times put this together for um, other people 
then I would not use chopped parsley on the top of the eggs because then when you go and rewarm them and simmer them, the chopped parsley floats off, so who cares, right? So, but the flat leaf works out really well, and everybody should have some either really nice flat leaf parsley or curly parsley in their garden or on their windowsill so you can go and pick from it easily. But anyway, how's that?